I have a feeling Boston Celtics fans are going to be celebrating a lot of Boston Celtics accomplishments this year, but let's go ahead and start off with this one. Spam your 60s in the comments down below as the C's have now won 60 games so far this season, but up next it's got to be at least 65, right? Go ahead and comment those 60s down below and show the Celtics some love. Welcome into Celtics today by Chat Sports. You got Ali Barefoot here. And like I said, with the Boston Celtics, 60 wins on the record. That means they've clinched home court advantage through the playoffs up until the NBA Finals, which is huge. The Boston Celtics who are looking to reach Banner 18 this year. So on today's show, I want to break down the top four, top three toughest opponents the Boston Celtics are going to be facing in the NBA playoffs and particularly we want to focus on the first round here. As you guys know, there are about 12 games in between first and second right now in the NBA Eastern Conference. Nobody is touching that first seed. That is the Boston Celtics to have and to hold. But underneath the five seed, you got Miami Heat at six, Indiana Pacers at seventh, the Sixers at eighth, with a now semi-healthy Joel Embiid. Chicago Bulls are right there at ninth, and the Atlanta Hawks are there at tenth. So, I want to break down four teams that I think the Boston Celtics would most want to play to least want to play in the first round of the NBA playoffs. And of course, if I'm the Boston Celtics and I want to take on the number one opponent here in the first round, I'm going to go with the Chicago Bulls for my best chance at just having a nice little four-game sweep, moving on to the semifinals, and just keep moving forward in a probably very intense playoffs the Celtics could be facing. As of right now, the Chicago Bulls in ninth place, they have had an identity crisis all season long. Zach Levine said that he's going to be out for the remainder of the season towards December, November. Lonzo Ball has been dealing with that ever and never-ending knee injury since he got into the NBA. DeMar DeRozan was once a light for the Bulls, now not so much. Caruso on defense can still be a pretty good asset, and Kobe White really is their only player to look at because when you look at these stats on paper, the Boston Celtics, the Chicago Bulls, the number one stat I want to point out is the Boston Celtics are taking 10 more three-pointers a game. That stat alone makes me believe the Boston Celtics should be able to take the Bulls in four straight games. Along with their defensive rating is higher, their net rating is astronomically higher. I do think that if the Boston Celtics were to lose one game to the Chicago Bulls, I'd be a little bit worried. This should be an easy sweep. They've already beaten them three times so far this season. So if I'm Boston Celtics and I know the Atlanta Hawks and Chicago Bulls as of right now are going to be playing for that play-in spot, I'm going to be hoping the Chicago Bulls are going to pull ahead against DeJounte Murray and Trey Young so we don't have to face the Atlanta Hawks yet again in the first round of the NBA playoffs. So my question here to you, the first question of many as we have another Three teams to get through here is do you want to play the Bulls in the first round of the NBA playoffs? It's coming pretty quick, so be sure to have your answer ready. Type Y for yes, type N for no. And while you guys are doing that, I just want to give a quick shout out here to our sponsor on Celtics today. Of course, that is Prize Picks, the number one daily fantasy sports app in America right now. And here's why you guys should be playing it. It's super easy. All you have to do is pick between two to six players and just pick more or less on their projected stats, and you can win up to 100 times your money with as little as four correct picks, especially on basketball, hockey, college basketball. March Madness Final Four is about to happen. Be sure you get your picks in as well because March may be over, but we know April is the king of crossover season when it comes to basketball and baseball and hockey. I personally am just going to do some picks here on the NBA. I love the combined picks that Prize Picks does offer. I think the Joker and Sabonis to have more than 26 and a half rebounds. I mean, I'm really going to go for that every single night of the week. Plus, De De excuse me, Dante DiVincenzo to have more than 14 and a half points. I wanted to go a goblin with DiVincenzo here. A goblin is an easier pick. It just doesn't pay as much, whereas a demon is a harder pick, but it pays a lot more. So I do have more on both of those stats and you guys can go on ahead and make your picks right now at prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Using that promo code CLNS, you're going to get a first-time deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It is that easy. If the Atlanta Hawks do happen to beat the Chicago Bulls in the play-in game, if that is what it comes to with six games left in the regular season, I do think with the last two games the Boston Celtics played against the Hawks, 
they could actually be contenders yet again for another six to seven game series. Just ever so slightly because I am worried about what happened last week in Georgia. The fact that the Atlanta Hawks beat the Celtics not once but twice without Trey Young, I mean, that's got to have a siren over your head, at least at some point. 123 to 122 was the second game where they actually defeated him in overtime, which has been the Achilles heel for the Boston Celtics this entire season is how they're going to finish not just a game, but how they finish quarters as well. And I do not mean to bring this back up this close to this year's playoffs, but I got to talk about what happened last year in the first round. The Celtics looked really good in those first two games. Look at those scores. The differential was there. But then Atlanta creeped back. Naturally, I could see that game going to five. Well, it definitely went to six. Then you had Atlanta one more time come back, coming back against the Boston Celtics at home. And of course, you guys know this was game six. Then it went to game seven with the 76ers. Then it went to game seven with the Heat. Even if the Celtics made it to the finals, they would have been washed because they went through so many games to get there. However, I do know the Boston Celtics have a different roster this year. They didn't have Tingus. They didn't have Drew Holiday. So I do think that if they were to take on the Atlanta Hawks one more time in a series, it shouldn't be too much to handle, which is why I think the Boston Celtics would probably prefer to play the Bulls. But if they had to play the Hawks, I think that dog mentality is going to come out. It'll be a game changer. So my next question for you guys, are you worried about the Atlanta Hawks in a seven-game series? Like we saw last year, nobody expected that to go to six games. So comment why you're worried or why you're not worried down below. I got to bring up the uh, old familiar foe here in the NBA playoffs, the Miami Heat. I am begging the Miami Heat to fall just one spot to enter that seventh place sweet spot, have a play-in game, and meet us in the first round. I think the Celtics would absolutely wipe the floor with the Miami Heat. A, they should because of how much vengeance they have from last year. I know that not just Jalen Brown, but also Jason Tatum and other Boston Celtics players want to redeem themselves from what happened in that series last year. So when you do involve the Miami Heat, I know they're not the same team they were last year either. They dealt with some injuries. I talked to Nick Roloff, who was the host of the Heat Report here at Chat Sports, and he did say that the only injuries they have right now are Tyler Hero. Jimmy Butler has been day-to-day -day in some of these games, but you know what? So is Jalen Brown recently. A lot of these players are trying to get their maximum rest before they head into that seven-game series, possibly in the playoffs. But I also got to bring up what happened last year. The Celtics did blow. A three-game lead, which led to ultimately seven games and ultimately a loss. I do not want to keep rehashing this, but I have to bring up this one aspect that will scare me from now until the day I die is playoff Jimmy Buckets. You guys know every time Christmas season comes around or a holiday season comes around, everybody's like, Mariah Carey, she's defrosting. Michael Buble, she's defrosting right around November. That's Jimmy Butler in April. This man is gearing up for the playoffs. I can feel it. It keeps me up at night. And I'm going to be honest, I just don't trust Eric Spolstra going up against Joe Mazzula. I'm going to take Eric Spolstra nine times out of ten in that, in that game series, which does make me a little bit worried. But the good thing is, even though I'm worried, Jalen Brown is not. He has said since the beginning of this season, he said, I'm extremely motivated, and I'm the type of guy that always finds a chip on his shoulder to come out and compete. Not being able to ultimately get to the ultimate goal so far in my career is something that gives you extra motivation. These Celtics players who were on the team last year have not forgotten what playoff Jimmy, Bam Adebayo, Duncan Robinson, Tyler Hero did to their team last year. So I do think that a rivalry does add a little bit more spice to an already pretty spicy playoff matchup. But I just don't trust Joe Mazzula in the end to go up against Eric Spolstra. I do think the Celtics do have the resources in terms of roster, but it does come down to coaching at some point. We've seen that against uh, the Denver Nuggets. What, Coach? Uh, Mike Malone. Malone. Thank you. I kept wanting to say Muscala for some reason. Michael Malone, we've seen that against the Nuggets. We've seen it against Eric Spolstra last year, so that's my main concern. Who are you most concerned about on the Miami Heat? Is it playoff Jimmy Butler? Is it Bam Adebayo going up against Chris Nass Porzingis? Is it Eric Spolstra? There are so many resources you guys can go on ahead and pick. Just put your comment down below. The least 
likely team the Boston Celtics want to see in the first round of the NBA playoffs is, has to be the Philadelphia 76ers. The Celtics should honestly hope and pray they do not face the Sixers in the first round. Do I think they would be able to overcome the Sixers? Absolutely. But my main question here, at full strength, completely healthy 76ers roster does provide a lot of stress for the Celtics. And my main concern is who guards Embiid? You can have Al Horford, who's got the thickness. He's got the width to go up against Embiid. You can also pull Drew Holiday on there as well, who has guarded Embiid in the past. He recently also said the reason why he loves Joe Mazzula is because he's able to guard those bigger guys, not just the one spot every single game. And I'm not doubting Horford or Holiday, but in the seven-game series, Embiid can do some damage. You could also put Tingus Pingus on there as well, but with his lanky Lanky figure, I just don't see that going well if you happen to make it from five to seven games. Plus, they went to seven games last year, and I don't want a repeat of that, especially not in the first round. I want the Boston Celtics to have the same path to the playoffs the Phoenix Suns had a couple years ago when they ultimately lost in the NBA Finals. I want four-game sweep, four-game sweep, maybe five games in the Eastern Conference Final. I want the easiest path possible. And I just think any path that involves Joel Embiid in the first round is not going to be easy. So I talked to Tyler Smitty, producer Smitty, and I asked him, why are you the most afraid of the, Miami, of the Philadelphia 76ers? And he said, at full strength, this is the best version of Philly the Seas will have to face. To have to face Embiid after 60-plus wins is kind of crazy. But Joel Embiid is not 110% right now. He just recently came back from a very, very long injury. So you are going to kind of get a minimal crippled kind of Sixers. But still, there is that kind of rivalry. I do know that Derek White did recently say on a podcast that he loves playing in Philly and he loves winning in Philly. So let's see what happens in the first round. If they have to play the 76ers, pick a team you guys would like the Boston Celtics to face in the first round. I don't see why anybody would pick anything other than Chicago Bulls if they want an easy, easy path. But I know C's fans like to also have a chip on their shoulder. So if you want to face Jimmy Buckets in the first round, type MIA. If you want to see Embiid and just knock him out early, PHI. If you want to have a nice little vengeance for what happened last week against DeJounte Murray and Trey Young, ATL. And if you just want a four-game sweep, type CHI. And as always, go ahead and hit that sub button. You guys know we're going to be live from here on out every single playoff game. No matter who they play in the first round, we're going to have everything you need to know right here. All you guys have to do is subscribe. Thank you.